Last time on Probe Point, Tango awakens after consuming way too much alcohol. Like, way too much. <laughs> Mom was scared. But to his surprise, eight months of not making any videos of substance had gone by. What will our hero do? I don't know, probably make a new one after, you know, I sober up a little. Just about some nerdy shit. That's just a guess. I mean, who knows? Hello everyone. Turns out I've been gone for a while. <laughs> this is a uh, pro point. So for those of you who are old time subscribers to my channel, this series will be replacing Hello World. Basically, uh, you can expect freeform tech related videos. Um, I've been trying to think of ways to combine my tech related interests and my video making interests um, to make like sustainable and frequent content that's enjoyable to make for me and uh, enjoyable to watch. So we'll see how far this goes. Uh, this is still a personal channel at the end of the day, so I may upload other things that interest me, but that's the gist. So with all that out of the way, today we're going to be tackling um, making a streaming, dedicated streaming PC for my future videos. I'm going to be trying out turning my old AMD FX8350 base build that I was previously using for virtualization into a dedicated stream PC. So it seems like a pretty basic concept, but I feel like there's going to be more to this than I may have initially anticipated. So first we're going to do the basics. Um, format the drives, install a new operating system, um, and install OBS and all the profiles, dial in overclocks, encoder settings, all that stuff as best I can. But after all that groundwork is established, I'm curious about how OBS handles its sources, so I'm planning to investigate which is better. Simply um, sending a fully sourced stream from the host gaming computer to the encoder box, or some kind of combination of splitting up certain processor intensive sources between the two machines, or maybe just having all the sources on the encoding computer exclusively, um, except for maybe, of course, the uh, game or screen capture and the cameras. So hopefully I'll have that all figured out by the end of this video. Um, the computers we'll be using today are as follows. The gaming PC is a 5820K build with 24 gigs of DDR4 2600 memory, and a reference Titan X Maxwell for handling graphics and all of its uh, built in a stylish Mesh Meshify C from Fractal Design. And uh, it's all built inside the uh, EVGA X99 Micro 2 motherboard. Now the encoding PC, we're looking at an FX8350 obviously with 16 gigs of DDR3 at 1600 megahertz. Um, and it's built in an old piece of shit like that uh, using the iconic Crosshair 5 Formula Z motherboard. So now that all the uh, players are introduced, I have some work to do. I'll see you after there's something worth uh, worth showing. All right guys, it's been a few days and now we're back with the results. After installing Windows 10 Pro, build 1809 on the stream PC, then configuring OBS with the NDI plugin available on the OBS forms plugin section. And also I'll link it in the video description I began testing the limits of the FX8350 in X264 software encoding. To my surprise, this CPU was able to encode my stream at 7800 kilobits per second, 864p, 60fps in the faster X264 preset, which easily crushes NVIC at similar bit rates thanks to the preset being able to go down so low in the X264 stack. This result is incredible to me. I mean, this CPU is seven years old, and now seeing it output this smoothly today, it's blowing my mind. I think for anyone who is looking to get their feet wet into dual PC streaming on a budget, you have to consider your local buy and sell groups, because these CPUs are going for cheap these days. Uh, it seemed to do better than any other CPU I have right now. I've tested my mostly laptop parts, but uh, just so you have an idea, the other processors I've tried with this are the i7 2960XM, uh, the i7 uh, 47, 4720, no, 4702HQ. Um, and even I've also tried an older, I mean, obviously it's probably going to beat an older CPU, but the Q6600 is a pretty popular part and it beat that too. So um, it might not sound surprising considering how cheap the older, or considering how old those processors are, but if you also consider how cheap the FX processors are getting, um, you really probably should look into this if you're thinking about getting your feet wet. It's an avenue to consider anyway. 
So my testing with splitting OBS sources between host machine and code machine seemed irrelevant to me personally because of how well it just handled it out of the gate. Um, so the only source that was on the stream PC at the time of encoding was the NDI plugin capture source. Um, the following video clips you're about to see uh, were streamed to Twitch and then downloaded after using Twitch Leecher 1.5.4 to download the VODs in one piece from Twitch. So here you can see the settings being pushed through my gaming PC with uh, NVNC. The resolution and bitrate have stayed the same. Uh, NVNC was configured with two pass encoding on, two B frames, and the encoder set to high quality preset. Um, as you can see, the FX system was able to keep up in quality and arguably looks even a little bit better than NVENC. Um, having absolutely zero performance <laughs> impacts to the gaming system as opposed to the typical uh, 5 to 10% uh, you, you expect with NVENC. So hopefully that does it for you guys. Um, I hope you got something out of this project. I know I'm looking forward to having streaming with no impact on my games. Um, let me know what you guys think about what I did here in the comments below. I'm interested in what you guys think about the idea of using two PCs with NDI, um, or just your experience with doing something like this, or if you think I should have done something differently. Um, furthermore, if you want to help out my channel, support future Pro Point content, um, please consider subscribing. Uh, the closer we get to 100, the better, because I, once I get 100, I can get a custom URL for my YouTube channel, which is a big first step. Um, after that, I mean, if you want to follow my social media links to get notified when I go live on Twitch, also the Twitch page is down there. It's all in the video description. So I guess that's it for now, and I'll see you all next time.